probably wondering what the grand total is for this residential mowing setup. It's a total of dollars. I'm gonna give you the complete rundown of our Northern Lawns truck setup here from A to Z on how much this piece of equipment here behind me costs, what to look for on how to get the best deal when you're looking for a truck for your mowing setup, the accessories that come with it, and the equipment we use for residential mowing. So right beside me here, we got a 2018 Chevy Silverado long box single cab V6 and this puppy ran me about $13,000. This particular truck you can find between as low as maybe $10,000 for a really beat up model all the way to $20,000 being close to new. What I looked for when I was purchasing this truck was between $100,000 to $200,000 kilometers not miles. Guys remember I'm in Canada not in the US so everything I'm talking about in terms of dollar amount is going to be in CAD. That's CAD for you guys. Sadly I'm not in the US. Behind me here, this truck was $13,000, 190,000 kilometers on this truck when I purchased it. I know it's a little bit on the higher side. However, when I did a report on this truck and looked at its history, it was owned by the city of Toronto. Very, very well taken care of. Oil changes twice a year, undercoating twice a year, you name it. Here in Sault Ste. Marie, being in Northern Ontario, we probably would have paid upward of sixteen dollars to $17,000 for this truck, but ended up getting it for a good $13,000 Canadian. So I did buy some other models that were a little bit older and, and they ended up needing a lot of body work and extra time and attention. If you guys want to be quick and you want to look for a deal, find something between 100,000 to 200,000 kilometers, something that's, you know, anywhere between five to 10 years old. Make sure that undercarriage is looking nice and healthy. Make sure it doesn't need too much body work. You know, if it's a little bit dented up, that's fine. You got to remember you're wrapping it anyways. If it's an ugly color, don't worry about that either because like I said, you're wrapping it anyways. So this truck actually you're not going to be able to see it too well because now it's wrapped right but this truck had a little bit of a dent right here in the box side it was it was quite vicious but it did bring the value of it down a little bit and I was able to you know accomplish getting a better price out of it I think I actually paid a little bit lower than 13,000 this was about six months ago I think I hustled a little bit of a better deal I think it was more around 12 because I complained about the dent but regardless we pulled it out a little bit the best we could yeah if you were looking at the paint underneath this wrap you'd be able to see the dent more visibly but now that it's all wrapped up, you can't really see. Now, another thing about this truck, it is a two wheel drive, not a four. And if you are using this truck in particular for mowing only, I definitely advise there's no reason to spend the extra money on getting a four wheel drive. It could cost an extra two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 on your mowing setup. And if you're not gonna use it, then it's really redundant, right? So I tried to buy as many two wheel drives as I can. I do have some four wheel drives in the fleet that just ended up happening as a fluke because I still got a good deal regardless. You end up with a four wheel drive for a good bargain. You bonus. If not, two wheel drive does the trick. Some other things I may be using this truck for come winter time is I'll definitely be doing some picketing with it when we go put our snow markers in before the winter starts. However, we don't have too much of a purpose for it over the winter. This beast is more for cutting grass, putting some snow markers in at the beginning of the winter season, as well as doing some spring cleanups. So that's what to look for when you're going to be purchasing the truck. Now I'm going to move on to some upgrades. You're not going to be able to see them physically because they're underneath the box of the truck. Something I really, really recommend you guys do when you're getting the single cab long box for your residential mowing setup, you gotta remember if you're packing on one stand on, two stand on, maybe two zero turners, some extra cargo in the back, whatever the case might be, you gotta remember that these trucks are only good up to about 2,000 pounds. And then you're kind of really putting some weight on the back end of this, uh, this truck. So you could decide to put some extra leafs in. I decided to go different route. I went with airbag suspension. I recommend and going with the airbags they're a lot more stronger so you're not going to be able to see it too well from in here but i'll show you from the back if you guys can see closely andreas we're gonna have to show them right through here so if you guys look underneath okay you see that's a little port for you to be able to hook up your air hose to right there and you could deflate the air in the suspension or you could inflate it. Being able to help you carry a few more pounds around when you're out in the field and you got this thing fully loaded. So fully loaded, I mean, we put two stand-on mowers in here. We put some all of our accessories, 
the trimmers, the backpack blowers, you name it. I would say we're a solid 2,500 pounds when we got this thing fully loaded with two stand-ons, a push mower, and all the accessories. So we're a little bit overweight, which is fine because we got the airbag suspension to help that, right? If you wanted to drive this truck without any extra leafs or airbag suspension, and you had this set up on the back, you know, ramp racks about 500 pounds, the accessories might be, you know, an extra 100, 150 pounds. Your two stand-ons are gonna be about 700 pounds each, right? You could get pretty fully loaded quickly. So I recommend Leafs, airbag suspension, blocks, whatever you wanna try that might work for you. This has just done really well for us. So that's $1,000 for the airbag suspension in this 2018 Chevy Silverado. That's an upgrade that you cannot go without. That's almost like getting the Kubota L6060 or the John Deere 4066R without the hydraulic accumulator in the back to dampen the ride of that blower jumping up and down on the road. Airbag suspension is gonna help you out big time, guys. Make sure you buy one. Now, one of the most important things too, you're gonna pay some decent money for these trucks, but you also want your guys to look good out in the field. So what we do is we fully wrap them from A to Z, guys. Check it out. From the rear bumper all the way to the front bumper. Now, mind you, it's not as mint as it was first day, but it still looks great for having a good solid four months of hardcore work on it. You know, we take a lot of pride and take care of our equipment here at Northern. The boys were actually just washing these trucks down yesterday. They look great. Moving on to the total cost of this truck, your $13,000 for the truck, you're another $1,000 for the airbag suspension, and then you're another $3,000 for the truck wrap. This could vary from city to city. So that's for a grand total of $17,000 on the truck setup out the door. We've been driving this thing hard for four months, guys. Despite this truck having 190,000 kilometers on it, it has performed absolutely incredible for us out in the field, working long hours every day, five, six days a week for eight, 10 hours a day, never turning off. We haven't had one issue with this truck. So salute and God bless GM. We absolutely love you guys. That's all we run is Chevy and GMC around here. Now we're gonna move on to the accessories. That's what makes this a residential mowing setup right here is the ramp rack. Now, most of you guys rock the truck and trailer setup up nothing wrong with that it does work well it has its purpose some of you guys run the enclosed trailer setup as well that certainly has its purpose too however we wanted to be robust we wanted to be nimble out in the field we wanted to be efficient and we also wanted to stick to the residential market because that's what we do best with our snow business behind me here now what first enticed me and motivated me to really dive deep into getting this setup was when I went to go meet my friend at Summit Lawns Ted Glazer shout out Ted love you to death brother he runs this very similar setup but it's more custom which i do admire there's a couple more bells and whistles he's able to accomplish on his setup versus ours however this was the most simple way of throwing together four residential mowing setups as quick as i could was with this ramp rack solution so as soon as i came across this ran down south picked up four setups picked up all the accessories and here we are the pros to running the ramp rack in my opinion over a, a truck with the trailer is you're going to be more efficient personally you don't need to train guys to, to haul a trailer around you don't need to spend the annual maintenance on a trailer you don't need to spend the extra fuel hauling a trailer you don't need to worry about damages from guys jackknifing a trailer there's there's just so many other things you don't have to be longer right like you're going to be longer maybe a little bit wider too you know taking wide turns in subdivision and parking on streets and this and that. It's gonna cost you more money as a company running that setup, in my personal opinion, and you're gonna be less efficient. So uh, this just makes a lot of sense to me. Some of you guys could disagree because I know you can't put the large, you know, 72 inch and 60 inch mowers on these uh, setups. Uh, mind you, I actually think you could squeeze a 60 inch, but you can't really go much bigger than that. And that's why guys really complain about these setups. They're like, oh, you're being inefficient because all you could run is 36 inch and 48 inch stand-ons. Well, boy. We stick to residential for a reason, my guy. We ain't out here cutting football fields. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same idea with our snow business. We stay very niche, we stay very disciplined, and we're out here doing the cookie cutter lawns and the cookie cutter driveways. That's our business model. So this setup for us is ideal. Do I wanna get a setup that's a little bit bigger? Just, you know, so we could maybe fit a 60 inch? Yes, stay tuned for that. We will have that coming soon. Kind of similar to like these big tractors right behind you. Andreas, you want to show them? Now, I, I am pivoting for a second, but we got our small tractors here that are in our tighter subdivisions that obviously take care of houses that are cookie cutters, boom, 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 one after another. And then we got these bigger tractors here that are on the outer skirts of the city that can run a bit of a bigger blower, get from house to house quicker and could accomplish doing larger driveways. So similar idea with our mowing company. Right now, I only have four of these truck setups 
and I'm really interested in getting into a, a setup or two for next year that could be similar to like my big tractor idea where we have a little bit of a bigger piece of equipment on here like a 60 inch or 72 inch uh, mower and we're cutting some of those more larger properties for residential homeowners on the outskirts of the city. So stay tuned for that. This is the most ideal setup if you wanna get into the residential market. I swear to God, I wouldn't advise on getting anything else. So let's get down to pricing because I've rambled on for way too long. Okay, we're gonna start off here with the handheld blower attachment. This is gonna run you, I think this is about $300 here. This is about 250 on the handheld tool mount here. This is gonna run you, I think about 450 for the backpack blower holder, or maybe it's about 350. Like I said, don't quote me on these uh, attachment guys some of them are like 100 bucks and then some of them are like 450 bucks so i'm kind of playing guessing games here this bad boy right here was about 250 if i recall correctly the spool the five pound spool trimmer line holder is about a hundred dollars the water cooler holder was about 200 dollars and then i know for sure this was 450 dollars for the trimmer holder right here there's all of our attachments guys now let me get to the big prize right here the good old trusty ramp rack okay so we got the ramp rack pu 200 with the quick disconnect okay so fully 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 loaded ramp rack we didn't cheap out on these we wanted to get the best setup possible I mean, you could get them without the headache rack and they're about a thousand dollars less and you could get them without the quick disconnect that'll run you about 500 dollars less as well but the reason why we went with the headache rack guys absolutely love these they're able to pile on a ton of storage right up here on the shelf so that's super convenient. It also protects the back window when you're unloading and loading equipment and really using the box of your truck. You guys know how many times those back windows could get shattered, not just in this business in particular, but any sort of work inside a box. If you're always using a box of a truck, it's nice to cover that back window. Guys strap stuff down to it the whole nine yards. So in my opinion, for the extra thousand bucks, they're totally worth it. You're gonna save that back window from getting smashed. And then you also got some extra storage as well. So full setup here for the ramp rack, not including the accessories is $5,500. That's with the quick disconnect and the headache rack. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the total cost of all these accessories on our mowing setup. So truck was $17,000, like I said, guys, fully set up. Now the ramp rack itself with the Extreme Pro Series attachments is gonna run you this. Your $5,500 for your ramp rack PU200 Extreme Series with the headache rack and the quick disconnect. So that's 5,500 Canadian. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven attachments from the Extreme Series from Ramp Rack hooked up here to our truck. They're gonna run you anywhere between 100 to $450 depending on the attachment. There is a couple other attachments you could get as well, but we're clocking in at about $2,000 for all the attachments on this ramp rack. So 5,500 bucks for the ramp rack with the quick disconnect and the headache rack. All the attachments with it is an extra $2,000. We're at a whopping $7,500 for all the attachments here. Now I'm gonna take you to the inside of the cab, show you guys a couple things of what we got going on in here. Inside the truck, the guys keep a couple things handy, right? First and foremost, we got our nice ratchet straps right there. Always keep a couple on deck. They're in both sides of the doors here. We got our nice tablet mount set up right there. This will run you about $75. Shout out Ram Mount. They're absolutely amazing with the suction cup. That way you're able to put it on whatever side of the window you want. We put a tablet in here because everything is ran by software, GPS for our guys' routes. Tablets about 300 bucks, not including your software. We're gonna take a peek in the back of the truck here. I'm gonna pull up the tool bag. Okay guys, so this is what we carry behind the seat in our truck. We got a nice little tool bag set up here. Guys are rocking a little bit of C4 to get their energy up there in the field when they're feeling down and need a boost. We got some Gatorade, a little electrolytes when you're feeling thirsty and need to get some sodium in the body. First aid kit, very important. More ratchet straps, right? Those come in handy. You got some snips just in case I recommend. Quick bungee cord, never know. More bungee cords, little air compressor, portable, hooks right up into your 12 volt on the truck. This is definitely nice to have when you have a flat tire on your mower or you need some air in your tire on the truck. Comes in handy, highly recommend for 20, 30 bucks. You might as well buy one. All this I bought on Amazon too, by the way, besides the Home Depot bags in front of me here. This is all off of Amazon. Got a little tool set from Amazon Basic here. Nice and convenient to have. Small, portable, I'll pop that open for you guys. Nice little socket set here, check it out. Here we got our 31 piece tire repair kit with plugs. This is also very essential to have out in the field. Check it out, guys. There's the tire tool repair kit. 
very nice to have when you're running a flat on your stand on or if you're running a flat on one of your trucks. We got a heavy duty ratchet strap just in case uh, maybe one of the boys is you know mowing down a very steep hill and they can't get the mower back up. This is something you definitely want to carry with you. Some more snips, small snips, nice to have. And then a nice exacto knife. And uh, then we got our tool bag. All this is from Amazon, guys. Uh, we didn't overspend. You're looking at maybe 200 bucks total for the setup, maybe even a little bit less. It's very convenient to carry all this in the back of your truck. You know, you don't have to contact a manager to come give you a boost if you have this, or if you have a, a little bit of low tire pressure, you could use the compressor. You have the tire repair tool kit. You have the ratchet strap in case you get stuck. I mean, having these little bit extra tools for the cost keeps you really independable, helps with time just in case there is breakdowns. And then uh, last but not least, it's always good to carry some debris bags and there you guys have it that's our total setup here that we rock behind the seat okay now for my most favorite part of this entire video is the equipment right behind me here so i'm going to give you guys uh, a little bit of a different style setup here okay most of our guys will run a 36 inch stand on with a 30 inch push mower and then they'll bring a backup 21 inch mower for certain instances where they need to get through tight gates or small backyards or need to do a lot of maneuvering on a on a small residential property. I'm going to put a little bit of a twist. I'm going to put my favorite setup that we currently rock is a 48 inch stand on a 36 inch stand on a 21 inch push mower, and then all of our attachments that go on the ramp rack. Stay with me for a second, guys. We're going to load this entire truck up and give you guys the complete rundown of how this thing looks fully loaded before it goes out for operations. Check this out guys, with the ramp rack, you just pull in like this, put her down. It's nice and light too, really light. And that's it, there you guys have it. 48 inch was just nice and walked onto the deck. Now we're gonna go grab the 36 inch. So I get off of it personally and I just load it up like this freehand. Now you guys are probably wondering, why you guys rock the stand-ons? When you're on a stand-on, you have better visibility from being up high and being able to look around as opposed to being sat down in a zero turner. The footprint of a zero turner sit down is much larger, right? So a zero turner sit down is gonna be really hard to get in the back of our setup. Stand-ons are more nimble, they're more robust, they're compact, visibility's better, they're easy to get on and off of. I feel like you're more alert because you're not sitting down and getting lazy, you're standing up. So, I mean, with the setup we're running, we kind of have to use them, but I wouldn't choose a zero turner sit down regardless. I mean, maybe if you're doing massive fields and you're cutting for hours, then it might be nice to be sat down as opposed to standing up. But for what we do with these small little cookie cutter residential homes, stand on is the way to go. And it also fits our setup perfectly. Now, we're not gonna grab our 30 inch Turf Master. These bad boys right here run about 3,500 bucks, but they are beasts. Honestly, this thing is a hell of a mower here. Check it out. Quite heavy, it is self-propelled. But I mean, come on, 30 inches on this absolute monster. This thing is a push mowing, grass cutting a machine. And uh, the guys do love it in certain instances, but most of the time they're using the 21. These 30 inches have their purpose in certain scenarios. If I could go back in time, I probably would have maybe stuck with 21s, 36 inch stand-ons and more 48 inch stand-ons. However, not a big deal. They have their purpose and uh, I could see them being around for definitely a long time. So very heavy piece of equipment, but when you have a straight stretch, uh, they're really, really nice. This thing will take you for a run, literally. Now, I'm not taking the 30 inch on our setup. Most guys will rock a 36 inch stand on a 30 inch push, a 21 inch push. However, like I said, I'm doing a little bit of a custom setup that I like a bit more. One crew out in the field runs this setup and I just think it's very, very, very efficient. It's 36 inch stand on, 48 inch stand on and a 21 inch push. So I'm gonna put this 30 inch push mower away here because we're not using it. So here's our 21 inch smart stove, not the commercial series. The guys wanted something a little bit lighter. So we were gonna originally buy the 21 inch commercial series and we definitely will in the future. But for now, this was all we could get our hands on here in Sault Ste. Marie. And I really did like the smart stove feature about these as well as the weight. So they were the perfect setup. We're gonna load this bad boy up. So she goes in sideways like so, just like that. Now this is why we got the smart stove. Check it out right here. Flip this pin, flip this pin, just like that. 
move her up in there. Look at that, still got six inches on the dovetail. Lift her up. And Bob's your uncle right there, guys. Check it out. We got our 48-inch stand-on Toro in the front, 36-inch stand-on Toro in the back, and then our Smart Stow 21-inch push mower by Toro on the rear end of the dovetail. So we pack it in tight, guys. Now we're going to get to putting on some of the attachments, okay? Okay, so we're going to grab our trusty old straight shaft trimmer here. Okay, away we go. We're going to start with the two trimmers first. Pop them into place. After you lock it in right here, you got to lift this to the side so it opens up the locking mechanism. Slide it into place, tilt it back, make sure it's secured. So there's one trimmer in. I'm gonna grab my second trimmer here, just like I did on the last one, line up that hole, slide it in, make sure the top's unlocked, flip it back forward, and make sure all your trimmers are nice and locked in for the ride. So that's a trimmer rack right there for you guys. Absolutely love that. Next, we're gonna grab the water cooler. Trust the old water cooler that we bought for the guys, five gallon water cooler goes right in here unbuckle it put her in strap her in for the ride hear that click make sure she's nice and tight and you can load her up with your g2 baby next the fuel cage right here Woo! she's full baby boom close her up way you go okay so next we got the trimmer line spool load her up check it out it has the cutter right on the side. You just give it a little, and away you go. Okay, we're gonna grab this puppy right here. Big old D7. Grab your backpacker. Jam her in there until she's nice and snug like so. The tube wraps around the back. Just put it in, in place like that. Sits right on this holster. Lock it. Okay, so next, we're grabbing some of the hand tools that we carry on this setup. So very, very common, nice tools to have. You're gonna want a broom. You're gonna want your rake, you're gonna want your spade, and you're gonna want your square shovel. So I screwed up, but you're definitely supposed to put the hand tools in first. There you guys have it. Okay, last piece. Put it out, just like so, you see? Tube sits nice and flush. Okay guys, this is a lot to remember, so I do have my phone in my hand, but starting with the Toro Grandstand, 36 inch okay this is all in cad too remember this is in canadian dollars so for you americans i know you guys are like wow that's crazy you got to remember that your dollar is like 40 cents more than our dollar so just consider that 36 inch stand on thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. okay toro grandstand 48 inch is a total of sixteen thousand dollars we got our toro turf master 30 inch push mower that isn't on this setup but that is a total of thirty five hundred dollars we're going to disclude it from the grand total of this setup but i just wanted to mention that to you guys. Toro Smart Stow 21 inch push mower, $650. Echo PB 9010 backpack blower, $750. Echo PB 2620 handheld blower, $350. Echo SRM 2620 trimmer, $475 times two with the speed and feed head, of course. And then we got our Oregon 0.105 five pound spool of trimmer line here. Nice thick stuff, guys love it, and it holds up really well in our trimmers. Last but not least, clocking in for a grand total with all the equipment you see on this setup, $32,275 for two stand-ons, your push, and all the extra attachments that you need trimmers, backpack blower, handheld, you name it. $32,275 total for all the equipment on this setup here, guys. Now, I have gave you the complete rundown and I gotta add a couple little things. The Toro equipment's been amazing for us. I highly, highly recommend. I know there's tons of other great companies out there making grass cutting equipment and I can't wait to test some other models and different brands, but Toro, shout out. You guys have been, you know, really, really doing this well. Echo, absolutely incredible. The reliability has been amazing. Chevy, come on, our friends over at GM. All you guys watching, you know, you can't beat a GM. You absolutely can't beat a GM. These uh, accessories from Ramp Rack have been amazing. And just shout out Ramp Rack for the brilliant design. Super effective and works really, really, really well for us. So there you guys have it for the full Northern Lawns truck setup, guys. This is what we're doing residential mowing with. There will be some changes in the fleet down the road with certain types of mowers we use. And we're always innovating. 
but I think for our first year, we definitely knocked it out of the park. I'm in love with this setup. Guys absolutely love it, especially some of our employees who have came from other grass cutting companies. They're over the moon with our setup and the way we run our business. Now, the best part for all of you guys that have been watching until the very end, you're probably wondering what the grand total is for this residential mowing setup. It's a total of $57,600 Canadian for this full setup behind me here. That's attachments, ramp rack, equipment, truck, decal, and all the upgrades we discussed today. Even the stuff that's behind the seat. Drop a comment below, make sure you like the page, and please subscribe. It would mean the world to me, and it's truly my only ask. I hope you guys catch me on the next one. Appreciate you all. We'll see you soon.